Okay. Let's do show and tell. Okay. Let's do show and tell. Let's see what we got over here. Okay, we're going to start with the front row first. We're going to start with the front row things first. <laughs> okay. Now this this has got to be George's. And if I can, let's see if I can remember what he said on Saturday. I know that this is Poplar down here. And this. The name of that is on the back of it if you want to read it. <laughs> up, up top. Okay. P E R O B A. This is a box of that, uh, uh, what was it, flooring? It's, it's a hardwood flooring, specialized flooring. That somebody got, so, and I think, I don't know what he did for the, for the pistol in it. He might, it's That's yeah. yellow heart. Yellow heart, okay. And on this one, the flowers of pine. This one doesn't say. No, flowers of pine. Flowers are pine. And the rest of it's uh, cedar. Two different colors of cedar, it looks like. Yeah. And this one looks like it's got. You can read that one. Oh shoot! <laughs> it's on there. This one is going to be poplar. The flowers are T U T A J Y V A with a thing over the top. That's what the flowers are made of. <laughs> Can somebody pronounce that? Just let me know. <laughs> we were lucky Saturday because uh, Jane was here and she's the one that gave me that. She was in the uh, exotic wood, uh, wood flooring business. And I, I didn't even write the name down when she gave it to me because I go by color. And then here's a butter, butterfly which is made out of some of that more exotic wood again. It doesn't have any name on the bottom. But that's, that's all George's right there. And then we have a pen that was, <laughs> believe it or not, scroll sawed. Am I close, to Bob? Yep. It was scroll sawed and looked like you got, what, circles and... Yeah, that's just plugs I drilled to the blank. <coughs> okay. And filled it with red, uh, I think, uh, red oak. Yeah, it was red oak plugs and as a piece of mahogany I was playing with. Then there's kind of like, looks like there's a, some kind of, like a leaf or something going through there or something? That was uh, about three layers of veneer. I think one of the veneers was maple, and there was paduk, and uh, I forget what the other one was. Three different colors. But I cut a, a sweep across the blank, approximating the diameter of the pin, and then I glued, I, I slicked the veneer down real good with glue, and then pressed it all together with vise. After it set up, once you turn the thing down, is wherever you intersect the surface of that curve, you've got that uh, uh, flower look to it. Right there. Anyway, so there's a scroll saw. I guess this one started as a scroll saw, and then we made it into a pin, you know. Right, yeah. So it definitely had to have scroll saw first. Scroll saw turning. Scroll saw turning, yeah. Negative wood wasting. <laughs> um, this was made by me. This was on Saturday. This is this is one of my 3D twos and twos and ones. Looks like we got a hunter, and then we've got a wolf. It looks like up on the top. Bear, I think bear. I'm bear. sorry, bear. From this angle is a wolf, but that's a 3D two and one. That's one of the ones we're doing, and he was kind enough to bring it back. I gave it to him on Saturday. Okay, then we get into our. Um, Items that meet what we're about tonight, which is sawing other than wood, and I'm going to start. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to start here. We basically got a wood va wood turned vase, but everything else looks like it was made from sheet metal, cut by sheet metal, and then it was then it would look like it was painted or whatever. And the center looks like it's got a shiny shiny surface in the middle, and it's back. Raise your hand. Okay, that's who did it. She did the buggies last month that we had. But anyway, so that was one thing she did. And then she also did, she also did the owl out of a piece of sheet metal. I'm going to turn it around just so we can... Oh! <laughs> See, I mean, she's fancy. I mean, she's got this owl. 
Well, this owl is, I mean, 360 degree eyes. <laughs> How did it cut? Cut like butter. It was really easy to cut. I used a, a two watt spiral blade. Spiral? Oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> you had to keep your fingers right by the lines on both sides because it jumped a lot. The hardest part was getting it to accept the paint because I tried uh, Krylon and it just ran off. Okay, I would think some of my things of doing it, somebody else may have some jacks. If you take that after you cut it, if you were to take vinegar and paint vinegar on it, then that changes the, it changes the texture of it and let it dry. It'll take any paint then afterwards. That's just my normal, I mean, that's what I used to do. Now, does anybody agree or disagree with me? Yeah, but I'm just saying, what it does is it, it has it has a reaction. The vinegar is enough acidic acid against there that won't hurt it, but it 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 does something to it, so it'll allow the paint to stick to it. Okay. In the gutter business, you call that bonderize. Something to bond the paint will bond to it. Like say you take blue stone and dip it or muriatic acid and dilute it. Yeah. He's a, he's see he's an expert on that. Okay. Many, many years ago, gutter, everybody put up galvanized gutter, and it would peel. So then they came along and wiped it down with vinegar. But yeah. put copper, and you don't have to worry about it. Right. <laughs> but what I'm just saying, but if you do, like I said, that, that may try that the next time, and let us, let us, know, let us know if that works. Okay, then our, our gutter es expert made these two. He made this one, I believe, on Saturday. Um, I used the, I laid it up for him, and I used some cardboard that wasn't wasn't as strong as it should have been. He had a dip, more difficult time doing it. He, in turn, went home and did this one using quarter inch using quarter inch boards as his backing. Right? Did you cut more than one record at a time? Yes. Yeah, he cut three, uh, th three or four. And one of them didn't show. One one of them didn't work out because it created a little bit of an angle or it burned on him. But he was able to do, you know, do that as a, as a stack cut, so it worked fairly well. Um, but I didn't get a job in Nashville, so <laughs> right. it didn't work out. <laughs> I guess you're playing the same old tune. But anyway, so those are those are some things we had. Um, so uh, I think they were, and you got looks like in this one you've got, oh that's wood. Okay, I was thinking she had turned, she had bent it to make the stem, but she just used a wood stem. Looks like she cut it. So I mean, it's got some advan, you know, it's got some advantages. Uh, once you printed it, and then probably if you put a uh, a coat of uh, a varnish on it or whatever, you could have them outside. They would last a lot longer than let's say if you made that out of out of wood. So it does have some advantage there. Okay. Now let's see what we got here. Okay, boomerang box. Boomerang box last month was won by Rob, who of course is not here, but he brought his boomerang box. He got it to me. So it's here. He knew he would catch grief if he didn't. If it didn't boomerang back, okay? Let's, uh... Pick one ticket out of it for me, please. <laughs> Thank you. So then you can't blame it if it's me. Uh, seven. Three. Three. Did you get it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, and you saw I did not pick it. She picked it. <laughs> uh, I am laughing hard. Big boomerang box at home right now. He he you drew the boomerang busy. box for the turners at the turning meeting. So now he has. This is called luck. You're good at boomerang boxes. There's two yeah. kinds of luck. You know, I didn't do it quite for quite some time because there was about two or three weeks I got it in a row. When we used to meet out for the turner. How about picking me a lottery ticket? I'll pay you. Yeah. <laughs> you never, hey, you never take one. 
hey, I'm not going to win because I never do. Yeah, so you won't have to worry about it. Some people don't want to get... What, what it is for those who do, what we do is you make something to go in the box or some of them don't fit in the box, but you may put something in there and bring it in somewhere else. But we're going to say, you can bring anything you want back. Uh, we like for it in this class to be, be scroll sawed, but it could be a combination of different things. I have no idea what Rob made. We'll see. I don't believe he made it. Hey, yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Napkin, napkin holder. holder. Nice. Scroll saw napkin holder. Thank you, Holly. So now it's his responsibility for the month of March, That's April, to bring us bring us something back in the boomerang back. Well, I'll be harassed if I do. <laughs> but anyway, so that's what that's what our boomerang box is. Swap the two. Oh, I finally got something in that other boomerang box today. I said, no, I'm free to <laughs> And then Hans comes into the picture. <laughs> hey, I didn't draw the ticket. I had nothing to do. It's all her fault you back there. You threatened me when, when I came in today. Yeah, I said I was going to try to, but I didn't think yeah, it would do that well. Yeah, yeah. You took your ticket and put it on top. No, she reached underneath and got it. <laughs> okay, um, now, Rob's not here, but we're going to adjust Rob just a little bit. Um, we have had a request from an expert intarsia person who wants to do spiral candles in the first show or the first meeting after the woodworking show because he figures he's going to bring all these people in so I'm going to let you do a part and I don't think Rob's going to have a problem you'll do because we were going to do Christmas in July and I don't feel like doing Christmas in July in April so part of our Christmas in July was going to be ornaments spiral candles and wine glass holders so I'm just going to move spiral candles out of that and move it and put it with <laughs> scroll saw pictures. And so you will have it. So month of April will be, will be spiral candles and scroll saw pictures. And we're doing that because he last time he did it, which, which was probably two, two years ago, maybe. Two or three. Two or three. It's, it's our biggest hitting YouTube, one of our biggest hitting YouTube videos. How to make spiral candlesticks with a scroll saw. And so, just because you wanted it, George, you got it. That's even worse than the, than the boomerang box. <laughs> but anyway, so, that, so you've got that program to, to work in, because I think Rob will have plenty of time. He always has plenty of time on that. I need a long sleeve shirt. Now remember, May's program is going to be great. He ignored that. I didn't hear you, I'm sorry. I said I need a long sleeve shirt. <laughs> He's just doing it for the shirt. You already got one. You only get one. You only one get year. one. You only get one. You got yours early. Cause you cause you fest you said you'd do a class. So you said you would do the class the class and you're just gonna dump your class. No, you only get one shirt. I only get one shirt for he makes rules as he goes. Only one shirt out of my butt. No, that was a rule we made. Um May's program is going to be interesting. I know who will not be teaching it. It won't be me. It's going to be everybody out there. So I'm giving you forewarning. What I want you to do is I want you to bring at least four items that you have made that either you enjoyed making, you felt it was the best thing you've done, or somebody you gave it to that you can maybe borrow it back for a second really liked it or what I'm saying what we're going to do is it's, I'm calling it the best of the best so we're going to have a huge show and tell and the idea of it being that i.e. if this was let next week I'd come over here and say hey oh you brought this in George you really like this what was the reason behind it how how difficult was it to, to do you know, what did you use? And we'll ask questions on each of the items, and hopefully it'll be a kind of a self-teaching class on all the stuff that's encompassed in scroll sawing. That was, that's going to be my intent. 
But so, if you got time to, you know, start thinking what you're going to bring in. I'd like everybody to at least bring in four items if they can. At least four items. Because I'm thinking four with 20, that's 80 items, which should be enough to cover the, the program and, and get, because some of them are going to be similar. But, you know, could be 3D, it could be, you know, a picture, it could be uh, intarsia, it could be, you know, anything. Baskets, what, whatever, whatever you do. But we've got that. Um, so that's our program dates. Um, we've got uh, scroll saw pictures and the uh, uh, spiral candles will be, be April the 1st. And then we'll have best of the best in May. And then June we'll have puzzles. Flat tray, one cut, and standing puzzles. So that's what's, that's what's on the agenda right now. Um, Scroll saw opportunities. Has anybody had any more opportunities with things they've been scrolling that they might have need some questions on? Yes, sir. I got to tell a problem that I had. Uh, okay. I was in here for the for the. You were stinking up the place. Yeah. Well, that's one of the problems. Okay. I was using zebra wood. Yep. Uh, two by two blanks, and I had I was going to do a, ca uh, a candle candle stand. Okay. That was in one of the scroll saw magazines, yep. and I had a bear of a time. It's so hard. Of course, it sticks. What blade were you using? Uh, I should have asked you back then. I you never I asked me. A, I, didn't I want think to I was using a polar blade. Probably should have been using, like I said, because you. Well, the interest. George, George said I should have used a larger blade, maybe a number nine. That's what I was well, going to say too. I was going to say because you didn't have anything in, intricate. There wasn't anything that intricate in no, that I pattern that you could have used not you could have used a seven or a nine polar and your job would have been and then i probably i think you did though didn't you wrap it very heavily with tape <coughs> oh yeah yeah because the tape would help help give it some uh lubrication lubrication on it but i'm well, saying i i had to take it home to finish it because i kept breaking blades on it oh and now, I wish you said I something. finally finished it, but I'm I'm not happy with it because it's, it's, some of the the work is, is real thin, and I was pushing them like that. Well, today I had a I had made a a, a second blank okay. with a pattern on it, and I was gonna I said, well I'll do that today. Of course, I immediately stunk up my shot. But uh, I started and the first thing out of the box. I broke a blade. You know, I was using a number nine blade. How, and, what uh, speed? So what I did, I took the blade out and took it over to my bandsaw and I made me four, ten blanks off of it. Okay. Okay. I, got, I didn't want to waste that nice zebra wood. I don't blame you. What, don't, what, were don't the, uh, what were the dimensions of the blank? Two by two, two by, by two. Okay. six. Two by two then. Mm. He was very, pretty close. He was at his maximum. He was at, yeah. Yeah, he was was at the max on the saw. The, uh, the uh, pattern's two by two. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, what I, what I, if I a spiral blade would work better than that? Because it takes out more wood, it's a possibility. Possibility. When, I mean, I mean. Remember, I got in the boomerang box. I got that. Um, what's that black? What's that blackish wood? Remember. Um, ebony. No, no, it was not ebony though. That's that stuff that. that it was African black wood. But remember, that's the one that uh, Rob used, and he cut that. Remember, he cut me a basket. Remember, he cut me a basket with out of it, and it, it was. It looked like it was a dark. It was a darker wood, but it's hard as a rock. But he cut it with a, he's cut it with a spiral blade. Hey, Dick, what what kind of blade were you using? He was probably was using a blade. Yeah. Next yeah, time, yeah, I only get my blade from. Next from, time, just run down Home Depot and get a um, Olson blade with Vermont American. The, I saw Olsons. Chinat. Yeah, China, They'll probably work. Okay. Because the Olson they have a little bit wider cut. Okay. Gives you more curve. Gives you more curve. And the teeth are, it'll, it'll clean up the, uh, the sawdust easier. Clean that thing. Give it a shot. Okay. Any other, any other helps on that? What do they have here? Do they have, don't they have Olsons? Yeah, they probably have them here. They have Olsons here. They think they have Olsons on Yeah. Yeah. But, you know. If that helps, let us know. Yeah. Okay. And uh, a spiral or regular? Just regular. Just regular. regular blade, what, what number? Get a reverse tooth. Number, get a reverse number nine. What, what Bigger number? the better. Nine R. Nine R. Nine R. Okay. Okay. Any other uh, questions or comments? Okay. Now, I know 
We know Marcus did vinyl. We know you did um, metal. metal of some sort. Anybody else try anything else? Did anybody try anything else? I tried an egg. You tried an egg, okay. <laughs> it didn't work. Now, did you did you fill the egg with um, did you fill the egg with with um, um, uh, you have to you have to basically fill with putty. You have to use putty on it. You have to have a, you have to make it because you don't have a flat bottom. You've got to make yourself a. I've used like a sponge for underneath. May not okay. May not have been strong. It may have. It may. No, it just cracked. I mean, I when I drilled the hole and then. Okay. I just couldn't. Because I did. I didn't bring any. I I forgot to bring my piece in. But I did. I did. I did shell. What size plate did you use on the egg? Two. If you use a metal cutting blade on the eggshell, it works fine. Like what number? Um, the smallest you can get. Okay. Go. J Jeweler's there blade. There's a place down on Beaufort Highway called BFF, or JFF, called Just For Fun. It's a jewelry supply company. They had small jewelry. Jewelry blades so work pretty good on that. <laughs> now, I used I used just a regular, you know, nothing fancy blade. I used used them on a, uh, on a, on a seashell. But what I did is I filled the seashell with uh, clay. Okay, and then I just I was just free free cutting just to see if I could cut on it, and you know cut about I cut about at narrowed it down about six or seven speed wise, and and it cut fairly well. You have to do the corners a little bit, not like I normally turn my corners. <laughs> you got to do them a little bit more gradual, and turn them. Anybody try anything else? He tried, okay, and he brought some stuff. I mean, he cuts, how many people have cut Corian in here? Okay. If you've never cut, if you've never cut Corian, Corian to me, if you have the right blade. We'll, we'll, we'll see if I've got a good bl right blade in here or not. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll, we'll do it by demonstration. Well, there's some blades right there. So I know it. But you know what I'm trying to do. You, you know what I'm trying to do. I'll do this one because it's big. George is kind enough to bring some in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this, and I'll see. Gee, I really can't tell what kind of blade I have on this. I'm really ignorant. So I'm going to use this blade here, and we're going to see what happens. What we're going to do is put this blade in here. Oh, and I've learned, I learned on an email today that if if you tune the blades up correctly, they mess with George's hearing aid. <laughs> <laughs> and that came straight from George. Okay, let's see what we got here. What's that? No, it's an unknown. Usually when I cut Corian, I don't cut it at 10, I cut it about 7. The biggest problem I have with you if, you, if you haven't cut Corian, is if you stop, before you stop, back up. Because otherwise your blade will get glued in that spot and you will not be able to move. Something tells me I've got a wrong blade in here. Okay, what I have, and I know I have it in here, is I have a reverse tooth blade. And reverse tooth blades do not work on Corian tile. They do not work on plexiglass or anything else because what happens is it 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 glues it glues itself back. Even even your Corian blade will do that if you use a small blade. Yeah. I use a number seven for everything, even a little tiny print. Yeah. I found poly resin does the same thing. Yeah. So what I'm saying, if you use so, if we change this over, and George was George was kind enough to bring us bring us a blade here. I'm going to use a seven. I use a seven. Or, I use a seven or five. I mean reverse. 
No. No. Polar blade. You need it going one. You need the teeth going one direction. It doesn't get hot, but like I said, that blade doesn't look long enough. But um, the one thing I found out though, if you're cutting and then you stop, make sure you back away from where you were because every one, what will happen is one of the teeth of the polar hour will get hung in what you're trying to cut. And then when you turn it on the next time, it just breaks that blade just immediately. You, you know what I'm talking about, right, George? What, up in a V shape. Up in a no, what I'm just saying, if you if you leave, if you cut and you happen to stop, even if you're going a straight line, I mean, in, in, because the blade gets see the hole. The metal back. The hole melted back. I think there it is. There it is. But now. If you haven't cut Corian, when you cut Corian with a polar blade, you'll, you'll love it. It and you cut it, you cut it at about a speed of speed of seven, seven out of ten. I mean, a seven will do the best. That speed, I mean, you can go faster, but it, you don't gain anything. But it will cut so much better, and it's cut, it's like cutting butter. It's it cuts so well. caution that I would give you is you want to make sure if you've got any air draft in there, you want to make sure that the air draft is going away from what yeah. you're breathing. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> yep. Ooh, that is cutting nice. Well, see, that side, is, that side is, is basically cut. Now, this is the side that was already cut with that other blade. See how it's glued back together? But now this piece, when I cut, see that piece is loose? See how it dropped through? Mm -hmm. tray, color. Yeah, Marcus's tray. Okay, now, but from a standpoint of cutting, it cuts no different than a piece of wood. The nice part about it is there's no grain. It's consistent. It's consistent. And there are no knots. So you don't have to worry about that. The one thing you have to worry about is making sure that you keep pressure on it. Because unlike wood, if it bounces and you're and you've got some like if I'm doing those uh, um, military things where you've got a lot of intricate cuts and it bounces, it'll break. It'll break like glass. So you've got to hold it down versus, you know, if it was wood and it bounces, it'll still do the same thing, but most of the time I'm cutting on three quarter inch wood so it doesn't seem to affect it. But you got you can do the same thing that I do. I'm gonna call this the George method. If I come down here into this corner, which everybody loves to scroll saw these corners like this, if you come down, that's the end of the design. If I go down and go past that one blade link, back up. Turn into my waist and take my blade down to the corner. Now I've got a perfect, I've got a perfect corner. Now I'll finish this one piece here. And, but if you hadn't saw it, coring is is fun to fun to cut. But uh, the. Uh, Nice part about Corian is because it's countertop, if you're making trivets or something and you're giving them to people, you know, if they if they use them as a trivet and they get gravy on them or something. But see, if you look at that edge, you can't tell. You I cannot. Pass around a little field. Yeah, well, I, he's on the camera right now, so I don't want to take it away from him. Too, I'm learning. I'm getting better. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, if you feel it. It's it's just as smooth as can be, even though I was just a Corian blade. Smooth as Corian. You yeah, can feel feel on the inside of that, and you can see. But what I'm saying, but what, as I was trying to say is, by using Corian, Corian has the ability that you can you can put it in dishwasher and wash it if it, if you used it as made a trivet out of it. It also can do about 130, 130 to 140 degrees of heat. 
Okay? So therefore you can put a pan on it and it's not going to scorch. It's not going to, like if you had a piece of wood and they put a very hot pan on it. Because it's countertop in it and you can put it. So they make, make a very good trivet. They make a very good trivet from that standpoint. Um, and George has made numerous ones and you've seen them. And I didn't bring any of mine. I didn't want to, I didn't want to bring too many, too many of my stuff. But anyway, that's that. Now, um, and I've got I've got a good bit of core in at home. Also, I've got pattern, all kind of patterns. So anybody that's interested in trying it, I'll be glad to give them some core in and the pattern. Yeah. Where do you generally get the core in? Different get places. I start out start out with a place in Southwest Atlanta that uh, cuts cuts out for sink tops. He was giving the sink tops, and I think they found out they're worth something, so they quit giving them to me. <laughs> and uh, then we had a, I had a lady I was doing some work for that uh, said that she would see what she could do, and she came by one, called me one day and said, can you be, be up at uh, somewhere all across on Saturday morning? I said, sure. She said, well, there's a company up here that's moving, and they said, anything they leave, we can have. Huh? And uh, we went up there, we loaded two pickup huh? the Corian, and uh, my it's wife's been complaining ever since about it. <laughs> yeah. We've gradually, we've gradually gone away. Now, the interesting part about Corian is, it used to be, what they would do is the installer would install it, and they always had to cut out a sink, dry sink, or whatever. Okay. Then when they cut it, when they cut it out, what did they do? They didn't leave it for the customer, the Corian. They didn't want to leave it for the customer because they, they had to clean up. So then they didn't put it in the back of the truck. Then they'd get back to their office. Well, they they wanted their truck clean for the next job. So what did they do? Take it and threw it behind because it was Corian. They just threw it behind their behind their shop. I mean, so a lot of shops will have stacks this, this high, 10, 12 years old when, the, when they were doing a lot of Corian. And the trick is, it doesn't affect it at all. I mean, I got some, I got some that was white Corian that, I got some white Corian that was uh, at Georgia red clay as you can get. Just run under the faucet and it washes right off. You should have seen the lady that uh, found that for me. She was a real classy looking lady. And we got up there. She was climbing over in a dumpster she pulling stuff. Out. <laughs> I wish I'd gotten a picture of that. <laughs> but anyway, so it's it's fun to cut. If you had to, now every once in a while, if you get some of the newer Corian, Corian is a let's say Corian is a name like Kleenex or like Scotch tape. It's a generic. It's a generic thing. You get some Corian because of the pigments or the composition, the engineers in this room could come and solve it for me, but what I'm saying, if you get, let's say, a pink Corian, some of the pink pinkers or some of the colors, when you cut it, it may not come out like you want it. If you get a, like I said, if you get a red Corian and you cut it, it may come out pink because the, the uh, composition they use on the internally doesn't seem to work the same way as, as on the top sometimes. So, and the same thing if you did, did a blue, blue Corian, it doesn't come. But it, all these things that he has, these are the old standby, you know, these are the standby colors here. And all of these, will, all of these cut, cut perfectly. There's not a problem. Now, oh, the other thing you need to be careful when you're drilling it, don't get alarmed. Because if you're drilling these with, in, oh, everything on Corian can be done with any woodworking tool. So like I said, if you got, got this done and you wanted to put a round, you wanted to put an eased edge on it, you know, you could put it on your router table and, and turn it. It won't, it, it won't affect your, it won't affect your blades. It won't, it, <laughs> what I'm saying, after a while, it may, what I'm just saying. It, that stuff won't bust? Oh no, 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 no. It's, it, it, it mills just like, I mean, it would. Just like a board. Just like a board, it mills like a board. Mills, mills probably like a. If you took a piece like that and dropped it on the floor, it might break. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to break just normal. But it's not going to break if you're on the sub. But the one thing I found out when you're drilling some of it, when you're drilling it, if you don't, if you drill too fast, it'll pop. Well, it'll pop out bigger on the back. On yeah, the but I'm saying it'll pop. But it's got to drill. You just got to drill easy. You know, drill easy and Still let steady. it real steady and just go through. But a regular drill will drill it. So I mean. If you haven't done it, it's fun. It's a fun thing to do. Uh, I don't know. Between George and I, we've probably drilled the most, you know, sawed the most Corian, I think. And Marcus, Marcus, Marcus has sawed a lot of Corian. 
Not as much of it is available nowadays. Why? Because they're using marble and granite for the for their for their um, countertops now. But what about that artificial marble and stuff like that? Is that like Corian or something? Or can they to a certain that? degree, some of it you you just have to get some and try to see if you can cut it. I mean, that's what they say say in this book too. Is you just have you have to get one, get a piece and try. It. Like he brought in. He brought in a piece of glass, okay, and then he brought in a piece of, I'm going to call, say tile, glazed tile, okay. As you can see on the glazed tile, I had a, I had a uh, reverse tooth blade in there, whatever was it, whatever the blade in here that I was cutting the coring with, it cut, it cut this with, didn't have a problem cutting it. Hmm. I just didn't want to chew up too more, more of his tile, but I'm saying, so you could put a pattern in this and, and truly cut it. Now, it has a tendency, because this has a glaze on it, it seemed to be chipping that glaze, but it probably wouldn't hurt if you were just doing it, maybe if you wanted to do a star pattern out of here. Now, sometimes, think about this, it may not be so much that you want to make this to give, but let's just say you were trying to make a stencil, or in, in I've got a lady who does pottery. She does a lot of pottery, so she, she does a lot of stuff where she uh, flattens out the clay, and then she presses stuff in. I'll make something out of a piece of, you know, piece of coring or something for her because she can push it down. You know, it'll run through. And if if it's not real intricate, she can take my corian and she can put it in that that thing and go like this and run it through a machine and get a very good impression. You know, that when she does it and then she fires it and does it and it, you know, she takes my takes my stuff and uses use, use every time I turn around she takes my things and stays them in the wood. But, uh, so that's what she does there. Um now, uh I tried this glass. Yes sir. Uh these these patterns uh -huh. that are glued on here. Yep. Uh, I want to give this one to Marcus because he wants wants it. Okay. But if any of you want these, just come I'm up here. I'm taking them. Okay, come up and take take whatever you want. I got three I got three left. Do we, should we pull some tickets, or just who wants, who wants? Pull some tickets. <laughs> Plus that'll give you something, something to work on at the show. Hey, you won't get one. Seven, would you like one? Why don't you give them, give them to them? What would you? If anybody else wants one, I mean, if we're running Here. out, they want Who wants one? Who give wants one? one? Alex. Well, well, draw the numbers. Then. What do you want? Give one to Alex. Give one to Alex. You want this one? <laughs> you want a one. Which one do you want? <laughs> angel or chicken? Chicken. chicken. I got an angel left. Who hasn't done it yet? Yeah, I'm not ready for it yet. I don't know. some wood. Just I think you will. I think you can do it. Oh, you got the angel? You got the angel. No, he needs the chicken. <laughs> but any of you want Corin or, or the pattern chart, I think all of you probably have my email address. Let me know and I'll I'll, I'll get it for you. This place down the street down here wasn't that Corin. They didn't have Corin. Across and down to the left down here because we got our countertops from them. And I, they, they probably have Corin. It's, it's worth stopping by to ask them what, what do they do with the cutouts. What do they do with their cutouts? I mean, I hate to say it, I'm the sink pieces. Yep. Oh. Care, like he said, they care about throwing one out. Yeah. They didn't carry mine out. They didn't? No. They cut out, they had to cut out for a stove top. And they had this piece that was about this big, by this big. And he started to walk out the door, and I said, You believe that. I paid for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But see, see, like what they're doing now with a lot of them. A lot of them are doing now. They do cutting work. What they're doing is is a lot of with the, the people are doing the the granite or the what you call they're making because they're special tools that they can use and they're taking that cut out and just rounding them and making making cut to, out. Cut, uh, cut, they're cut, making cutting board. well they're making cutting well or what they're doing if you really think about it they're smart what they're doing is here ah. Here, just set your hot pots on top of this. Even though I know your counter worked great, instead of them putting the hot pot right in the middle of their new counter, just put it on this so they damage that instead of their new thing that they just put in, you know, when it's just in case, you know, if it was too, too hot. 
what I'm saying? And so they're doing a lot of that and making it kind of, oh, here, we're going to give you this expert. But like you said, you've paid for the whole thing, whether they, whether they, it's a hold in it or not. And I wasn't even scrolling at the time. Yeah. But I saw that beautiful piece and I said, you're not leaving. That would be something you'd use it for. <laughs> yeah. You see how narrow it is? You can still make a pen out of it. You can make a pen out of it. Oh, mm -hmm. hey, I cut. I have made pens. I have made chickens. I have made... Who? Who? Somebody dared me to make... What did I make? I, I made a puzzle. I made one of my three-dimensional puzzles out of one. I mean, I've cut anything you can cut with wood, you can cut on that one. Okay. Now... Um, we did it at the last class. If you take wood like this, this is wood. But if you take this and take two of these, take probably thicker paper, like I'm going to say construction paper or thinner or nice thicker paper, and you put put a batch between it. You could put 50 sheets, okay, between it. So you're making a sandwich, okay? And then, let's pretend this is a sandwich. Let's say I got other pieces in here. I think I showed this before, but for those that haven't. If this, let's just say this is a sandwich and I've got other pieces in here. If you take this, it's not that difficult. If you remember the old fashioned when you were growing up kids, remember how you, mother and dad used to wrap your presents? The old fashioned way, they didn't go this way to this way, they went the corners. And if you basically take blue tape, and go the corners like that, it's amazing how well that sandwich will, will stay together. You know, if you cut the corners like that, okay? So now what you have is you've got a board, a board, and you've got that paper between. Let's say you wanted to make some uh, fancy, uh, let's say, placeholders for a Christmas party you're having, or some kind of party. Put the design on top, treat it no differently than you would another scrolled piece or fret piece, drill your holes. Uh, probably wouldn't do real intricate stuff unless you wanted to do doilies or something. But I'm saying if you were trying to just do, let's say maybe you're trying to make some, right now because it's so close, let's just say we we're gonna make some Easter, Easter, name takes for the family thing we're coming in so we wanted a little chicken and maybe an egg and whatever so we went and got that design just stick that on the front maybe leave room on the bottom so you can put the person's name or whatever it is and then cut it like i said when you're done you got 50 of that pattern underneath because when you pull it up take it apart you've got all those pieces of paper that have been stencilly cut like that now bringing that up you want to do this border on your wall all the way around and you wanted to put I don't know fish dolphin or something up there and you go to the store and you can't find the stencil you want okay you could do the same thing here make your sandwich I would probably suggest putting maybe some um, like a like a plastic like plastic you know like maybe the sheet dividers you know what the sheet dividers what I'm talking about that thicker plastic put some of those in there Put a piece of paper between each one so they don't melt. So you can make four or five. Make your pattern of your dolphin you want. And I'm saying do it with a plastic because it'll last so much longer doing your thing across. And as long as you're making them, you might as well make five or six. So just in case one of them were to break or you not get what you want. Or maybe you want one to go this way and you want it one to be this way. A reverse, you know. You were going to... Who was oh George had to have had to reverse his pattern so he could have have the flowers come into the middle. His wife wanted the flowers in the middle, so he had to reverse his pattern so he had they were right and left handed flowers or whatever. But if let's just say you're doing dolphins, you wanted to be jumping at each other or something, you could do one one way. But you could do them all at one time, so you can make your own stencils. So that's one way. So you cut cutting paper, you could cut plastic. If you're cutting plastic though, it's nice to put stuff between it. If you're cutting um, if you're cutting plexiglass, even if you're, the biggest problem you have when you cut plexiglass, a lot of people cut it on the bandsaw. And the thing you have on a bandsaw, the advantage you have over a scroll saw over a bandsaw is you can reduce the speed. And so therefore you won't have it because bandsaws basically, most of them are two speed bandsaws and they're gonna, I guess, I guess you could put a rheostat on a bandsaw, could you not? Maybe. I mean, if, I, I don't know if you'd want to do it all the time, but 
I'm depends not sure. On the motor. Depends on the motor. Yeah. yeah, but I'm just saying. But um, you know, but if you leave, if you're doing plexiglass, leave that paper coating on there. It comes with a paper coating on the back. Cut it and then take it off afterward. If it doesn't have a coating on it, cover it with masking tape before you cut on it because it will cut a lot better. It'll lubricate it when it cuts. It'll come apart easier, be better, you know, when you cut it on here. So uh, we got some plexiglass. Remember somebody brought some plexiglass? People took pieces of it. Remember it was about that thick? It was like quarter inch. Quarter inch plexiglass. Yeah, he brought a bunch of it in and I had I got a bunch of weird yeah, stuff. Yeah, Ralph Ralph was doing a project Big for his project son, was, I think it was. It was all plexiglass whole stuff. Bunch of, whole bunch of pieces for his um, race cars and he had he had a bunch of I believe it was polycarbonate though. Yeah. It sounds to me like he could make deal with some peel and stick paper. We use that stuff at work all the time. Yeah, but it, but the expense. But the expense of it is, is, is tougher. I mean, I do, I make patterns a lot of times, and I've given some to George, and George has used it. If, um, what works really well, I use it sometimes when I'm doing a lot of little stuff. Like if I'm doing a lot of little things, like maybe the chickens and all those things where I really don't care, but I don't want to be messing with glue, I'm doing a demonstration or whatever, yeah. I'll do them on label paper. Eight and a half by eleven label paper, and then what I'll do is run it, and so that way you can just put it on. Now George has used it a couple times when he, when he didn't want to get his glue out and didn't want to get his stuff out, and he had it, and he just needed to make one piece or whatever. It's got some advantage. He doesn't like it, totally, but I'm saying it's not something you use all the time, but it, it has its things. So, so basically, you can stick it right on, and it stays on, and you cut your piece off, and it pulls off pretty easy. Yeah, every once in a while, I can get my hands on the off cuts that work. Yeah. And I've got a box full of it at home to play with. Yeah. But it works what, well. The what only kind thing. Of material? It's label paper. Label paper. Okay. Label thing. The only, the only advantage of eight and a half by eleven, you can run it through run it through a laser printer or you know, whatever it is. If it's offset, it's you're gonna have to, you can draw your stuff on it, but it has a tendency to work. Now I cut I cut some coins. Anybody cut any coins? No, it's not. That's the first thing. I, I, I grew up with that idea that you could not disfigure. I think it was current, one time. Current, uh, okay, current let me figure. let me read, and I'll even read you the statute, and you can go out and read it. And this 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 is titled. This is titled. Yes, it is legal. Somewhere along the way. In your coin cutting adventures, someone will undoubtedly come up to you and proceed to explain to you you are cutting utilized coins and you are against the law and you will be prosecuted if you persist doing so. And you will get in a lot of trouble. Let me assure you, this is not true. The United States Penal Code, Title 18, Section 313, states that it is illegal to alter, deface, or manipulate any coin or bill if done with fraudulent intent. So if I'm making jewelry out of it or something, it's not, I'm not, I'm not cutting it just to be, you know, I guess I'm not lighting a match to, if I guess I'm, it's illegal if I take a match to some currency, I guess. I guess that'd be legal because I'm burning no. currency. Our president comes from money all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, but anyway, so that's that's in here and okay. so doing it. Now the one thing I found in I was playing around and messing around with this one is that I can't let's see hold see. See if I can do it this way. See if it'll stand up there. Um the thing I found is what they say is true. I started off saying, okay, jeweler's blade, way to go. I mean, a jeweler's blade will just work so well. Everything will work perfectly. It'll be fine. I cut maybe a tenth of an inch. The blade broke. 
doesn't have enough doesn't have enough um, kerf or has problems with the kerf. Now, the other thing I found out is <coughs> this is a, not exactly what I used, George, but I, I I'm lazy. I cut it with a number three Corian blade, polar blade, and it cuts like butter. The only kicker I had, the only kicker I had was, how's your hearing aid? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, oh shoot. Polar are the same thing. It's yeah, I, I should have said polar blades instead of I should have said polar blades instead of corn blades. They used to have two different blades inside. The, the hardest part I had <coughs> was, and I screwed up right now. I probably need to. I probably need to fix it before I go on. Would it help to put that quarter on a solid piece and put two sided tape under it? Would it be easier to handle? Do you think? I saw, and I need some help. I looked and looked and looked. I saw in Scroll Saw Magazine. There was an article in the last three or four years that showed somebody making one that the coin fit just on the edge and fit in there perfectly and it didn't move at all. Now, one thing I did find out, the more holes you put in the coin, the better it works. And do not, do not take the burrs off. Because remember, when you drill a hole, what's going to happen to that piece? What's going to happen to that piece? We drill a hole. There'll be a burr on the bottom of it. Yeah. But what's going to happen? You've drilled a hole in a waste area, so you're basically it's going to go away anyway, right? So what happens is by leaving those burrs on, it it attaches to the wood and it doesn't move around on you. Now, I didn't do as well on this little contraption as I should have. Um, it needs some help it needs to be tapered more so the coin i'm not used to this george doing it from the top this is driving me nuts here this thing is holding it up too okay let's see if i can get your hearing aid going again okay now i don't know if you can even get to see me what i'm doing in here i'll let you work the camera i'm just going to hold the coin Now, you notice I have good fingers and I hold a lot of stuff very, very tiny and hold it. Don't hold the quarter. It burns. It hurts. It hurts. Now, just like this, just like I was saying with the, uh, um, the Corian and stuff, you just got to be a little bit... You see what's going on? Yep. It's not so. It's not so. Lumpy electricity. Cut a piece, uh, say three quarter inch thick, about this big, and drill that down the same size as before, and then put some two side tape, and I bet it would hold it real good. Yeah, what I'm saying, that's I was the. I'm sitting here thinking that that glue you stick the wood and stuff together. Why couldn't you glue the thing to that piece of wood you're doing there, and then you take the. What is. Because when that stuff sticks, it sticks. What's going on? Not the metal, the saw is just not soft. It's, it's fluctuating. Yeah. 
may have already read the teeth off the blade. No, it's not the it's not the teeth. What I'm saying, the the saw, the blade's going like this, and then it's you know, the the speed's not consistent. It keeps varying all over the place. Acts like it's running across the bed, place on the bed. See, I mean, I'm not doing anything in it. I mean, it's gone when it's. When it's I've only got about three quarters of an inch to go. All I'm doing, this is basically two pieces and it's friction, it's friction hell. And it, it does work, but you know, there's gotta be a different way to do it. I just wanna, I just wanna finish this one piece. That is weird. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Basically what I've got is a hole on the top and a hole on the bottom so I can see and also so it you know effectively makes kind of a holder but it's okay but it's not the best. I at least said I would I would attempt it. Come on, baby. Almost got his head cut out. Has anybody, who else has tried cutting coins? It's, it's, they, they, I mean, if you think about it, all it is is copper. On the new coins especially. And, and there are a lot of options. The nice part about it, there's a lot of options from the standpoint with all these, with all the uh, state quarters and stuff. Not you can make the quarter, not, not copper. This one is. Pin is might be. This one's copper. Even sandwiched. Yeah. It's, it's sandwich. Sandwich. Yeah. It's, it's a sandwich. Yeah. It's a sandwich. I mean, the the. I guess the silver that's on top is very, very, very thin. <laughs> Almost done, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Now let's see what I did. See what see what damage I did. Did you get it all cut? Yeah. Yeah. But I think that was the funniest. Too strong now. See, I'm learning this camera stuff. Whoops. Hans, what size polar blade are you using? Guess what? I'm using the seven that I was cutting the Korean tile with. I used the three before. I used the three. Three worked fairly well. It, it really, like I said, surprisingly enough, I think it's... Uh, it's cool enough now. Now it's it's cool enough. But anyway, but it's fun. It's try. It's um, it's a little bit e. I hate to say it, especially for these older people like me. Um, uh, magnifier helps, especially for cutting some of the little stuff. Now, one thing I did. You haven't tried it. No. Is that something you haven't tried?
<laughs> if everybody wants to tear tear a corner of this, these are kind of cool. Just tear off tear off a pattern and just tear off a pattern. I'll get you. Just tear off a pattern of that. That's a that's a thing that they do a lot of. Um, it. Um, I'm gonna see if I can find another one. Use it as a corner. Use it as a corner. And what you do is you drill you drill a hole on one side. Everybody cut. Oh, you got scissors. But you drill a hole in, hole on one side, you drill a hole on the other side, and then what you do is you take a quarter and then you give it to, it's called a, it's called a sweetheart quarter. Get one. It's called the sweetheart court. Thank you. Here's one for you, Bob. Uh, but anyway, so what you do is you take. You can't basically come over here. Send about a name. Okay. What you do is you drill a hole right here. You drill a hole right there, and then you drill a hole right there. Okay. Okay. Huh? You drill a hole right here. Then bear with me a second. Drill a hole right here, and you drill a hole right there. And in those two holes, you drill them so you can put a a ring. Okay. So you can put a ring so it be, so it could become a necklace. Remember, you're making two necklaces because what you're doing is you're going to give one to the male and one to the female. You mean half of each? They get a half, so it, to get it together, it goes back together. It's kind of like, it's, you know, it was an old tradition. It went way back. And the only reason I say you cut the other one, because then you cut, you put a hole there to drill out the heart. Mm -hmm. So the heart comes out. And then what you do is basically start here on the coin. Cut here, cut here, cut here, cut here, cut here. Cut around the heart. So you're basically making, mm -hmm. you know... You got to go here, come here, go here, go here, here, you know, and then come up, you cut out. You're cutting there, you're cutting this way, I guess. Right there, and then you're cutting, cutting that out. And then it becomes two halves, and they go to exactly together. So if you're off, it really doesn't make any difference because of why. The other person's got the other half, and so they go together. So that's just something I found. Um, Let's see, uh, another thing you can do, and it, it's kind of neat to do if you wanted to, is we cut metal, but you know, maybe your wife's, wife's keys, your spouse's key, you get one that's, that's always a problem and you, and you glue tape to it or whatever it is. What you could do is just take the key up in the, up in the top part, up in the head of the key, just drill a hole, and put an H or an A or whatever you wanted in it, you know, whatever that key was, and it's permanently in the key. You don't have to worry about that tape coming off or the label coming off or whatever. You know, you could, you know, just it's just a matter of drilling a hole, you know, basically taking a magic marker and put what you want and then just, just cut, you know, just cut around it and you could cut that, cut a stencil out if you wanted to in the key itself. Um, you know, plexiglass we used a lot. Um, we were talking about shells and talking about eggs. You know, try some of that. Seashells, the same thing. You could cut names and stuff in the seashells and stuff. Um, somebody asked me about leather. Now, I've cut leather and stuff, and I've done a lot of leather work and stuff, but, you know, it cuts well on the side. <coughs> I, I, I cut it with an X-Acto knife. I mean, I've cut, you know, I mean, most of the time I'm cutting, but I guess if somebody wanted something real intricate, you know, if you had it, you know, you could take a piece of leather and sandwich it between two pieces of wood, and you could do a, you know, a fretwork if you wanted that leather to be fretwork versus sitting there with an X-Acto knife cutting it out. I mean, you know, so it's possible to do. Um, uh, t uh, Carl and I have cut cloth. You know, we do that cloth where we take the cloth, take a piece of cloth. Uh, basically, I call it fat quarter 3D. So what I do is fat quarter. Fat quarter is the material they use for um, making quilts. 
So it gives you nice patterns. It's a fat quarter of a yard. And so what you do is you mount it, you mount it to a board. Uh, I prefer to mount it to either MDF or plywood, thick, like three quarters of an inch. And the reason being is the thicker your substrate is, then the more deviation or elevations you can have. And I basically, in this case, sawing other than wood, I've applied the material to the wood. I've applied the material to the wood, and then, and then I've cut it out and made it like a picture puzzle, and then, then glued it back and forth to make that, give it that 3D effect. I did that when I found the picture. Okay. Four, four rows, and you had four different levels on it that way. Okay, that was another thing I forgot to add. That's another thing you can do, is if you take, if you take just a general picture, and all of us now can print them out on our cameras and stuff. If you take, if you take a picture, and let's just say here's your picture, and let's just say, I'm not good, guys, so just don't give me a hard time. Well, that's <laughs> good. <laughs> there are no the so but anyway well, huh? so what you could do what you could do is like George was saying what you could do is take this picture and then what you could do is cut it out so that's cutting a picture you could take it and probably take your picture and mount it to a quarter inch board and then what you could do is cut it out so the so the background goes back and the front goes this way, and then what you can do is, if I'm looking down on it, you can take you a piece of pine, and then what you can do is route some grooves in it, if you wanted to. So instead of, like I'm doing the three-dimensional, um, doing the cloth, and I'm moving it in and out, I'm basically... I'm not losing contact with the with the other pieces of wood. In this case, what you can do is you can move the background and you could put it in the back slot. Put the put this person maybe in this slot. You could put this person in this slot and that slot and that, and it'll give it a more of a 3D effect. Let me show you what I was talking about. Okay. Well, I can't. But in our case, we had a, a family, you know, there's, there are people in the back like this. Okay. And so you cut, you cut all of those out, and you bring these out, and, and don't bring those out quite as far. And we had actually four... four right, what I'm saying, so that's what I'm saying. No, I didn't, didn't do it like that. I just, just brought them out a little bit. Oh, just a little bit. Just brought, brought them out, the depth I wanted them, and then put, turned them over and put glue in the back of them to hold them in place. But you had, you had uh, four, four groupings. Yeah, I, okay, that's what I was trying to did you do. He did it with glue. I did it by putting them in different slots on the way back. Either one. Yes, Tony. When my daughter was younger, a lot younger. You're um, getting old. I used to take that insulation board that goes inside of houses, the blue and pink stuff, and cut it into different shapes using a spiral blade. And in the bathtub, when she was playing, and when it gets wet, it sticks to the wall. So you get stars, stripes, numbered letters, so it's pretty cool. Probably now if we did, that was long ago, probably now they probably say it's got formaldehyde in it or yeah. something and it's it's against the law and illegal and well, there might be the problem with <laughs> but uh, yes sir. If you take a picture like that and you take say four pieces of quarter inch plywood and stack that underneath it. Mm -hmm. And then you go ahead and cut your figures out, and you've got four different levels that you can play with. Mm -hmm. You follow me? And then put. No. But are you saying use? Are you saying and here the picture, make it four hit here the picture four times to four different levels? However many, right? Uh, however many levels you want on the picture, put that number of quarter inch plywood uh, sheets of plywood behind it, and then go ahead and gang cut it. And then, and then, like, like oh, I figured that he's he's given he's he's that's going to allow him to push it in and out more because he's now got. But if you take take a piece of three quarter inch board and cut those 
those four levels out, you pull this one out. Yeah. See, uh, see, that's what you're using three quarters, and he's using he's using, he's using quarter. a quarter. So yeah. you're you you're doing more like what I you do with the cloth. Pull it, you couldn't pull it out with about an eighth of an inch, but you need enough to hold it. Right. Yeah, see, that's what, see, see, what I was doing, that's why I was using the slotted thing. Test, yes, Marcus? Would you catch a table in it, like you said, three-quarter inch? Yeah. I tell them the table, they wouldn't push it all the way out? Nah, because you're not, I, I don't, like Ted, what you want to do is you're not, what you really want is you want nice, crisp lines in what you're trying to do. And in George's case, the one piece we missed I was mounting it to a piece of quarter inch. George was mounting his to a piece of three quarter. So therefore he had he had the room to do like I did and, and Carl did for doing the pictures with the cloth. You have enough to, to pull it. Where in my case, I don't have enough for, for, for the wood to hold it. So that's why I had the slots. You know, you just cut it. Probably just cut a, a saw curve through there, and that that quarter would stand in there, so it would give you that give you that ability to put the background in the back and give you you know stuff up front. It's just play around with pictures. Pictures you can cut them and you make them look differently if somebody gave them to you. Same thing. Remember we said doing doing Christmas cards. You can do the same thing with Christmas cards that people give you, or you can make them like Carl does into puzzles, and you send them back to the person who gave you the card. You'll know the next year. You're going to get better. Two years later, you'll get better Christmas cards from them if they think you're going to. They think they're going to get theirs back. You know, I've seen people take that, that steel diamond plate and cut out uh, license plates for their cars or trucks, but it's like Ford or Chevy. It's, it's pretty cool looking. Yeah. Now the neatest, the neatest thing I saw, and I was going to bring it today, and I did, um, is fine china. Okay. There was a lady in a booth next to me, and she was using a a blade, more probably probably a carbide blade, about this size. And think about it. She was taking fine china. Okay, that had numerous patterns. Do we have a discussion back there? It's good for the group. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, I'm just wondering, it's difficult for me to talk when you're talking back there, so sorry about that. But anyway, she was taking fine china plates, and if you take a lot of plates, and my drawing's not going to be good, but it, it, I think it'll get the picture. If you, have a, if you have a nice china plate, it usually had patterns along the rim, you know, maybe six or seven patterns, you know, there's usually some kind of patterns, with, and there was usually, you know, some kind of thing in the middle. What she was doing, and this is what she was selling it, I didn't catch it at the start, is she had this plate and it had a bunch of holes in it and it was in a rack. And then there was this pennant hanging on the plate. And I wasn't getting two and two together. What she was doing is if, let's just say, That was the thing in the plate, and it was different colors or whatever. What she was doing is taking it on her, on her, basically a scroll saw, and she was coming in from the side here and cutting a, I'm going to say a standard size circle or oval or whatever, because then what she was able to do is take that piece of china and put it in in those collars. I don't know what's the proper name for those ladies. You know what I'm talking about? Where you where you take where um, where to it's, make a, to make it, a cameo. it looks like this. It looks like this, and then they these pieces go together, and you and you put a screw through here, and they come together. Or they sometimes they're no no they've got you know what I'm saying. They've got an edge on them. You can squeeze it down, and they stay good. But what she was doing is taking like this was maybe grandmother's plate okay and they were going to her and let's just say it had eight eight big ones so what you eight big logos on it so what she was doing is cutting out the logos and making pendants for the eight grandchildren so each one could get a piece of grandma's only plate that was left or and this plate may have been broken too 
So instead of throwing it away, they kept it. But now she cut them out and she made cutting them at a standard size to fit those fit those ring. Huh? No, 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 no. I'm not saying that big. It's it's. But they make them small. You know what kind of blades you're You just passed. You just passed them there. Right there. There. These things. But. See them? But I'm saying sometimes they don't have a stem on them. Sometimes they're just, they're just um, basically a piece of metal and you heat it and it sucks it. Engineering wise, it makes them smaller and it just sucks. It puts a, like a little grip around. So it's, but this is what she was selling. And she had bigger ones for the inside. But she had these plates and she had this, the ones she was selling, she just had a bunch of, she would go to garage sales or whatever and get the plates that had a lot of nice stuff on. And then she had, you know, a chunk out here and a chunk out here. I couldn't figure out what in the world she was selling. But what it was, is she had the plate and she had the pendant hanging there that was one of these chunks that she'd cut out and she had seven or eight more that she could cut out of there if somebody wanted them, you know what I'm saying? But that was cutting something other than wood. Did you find out what kind of blade she used? She was using a car she was using a thin carbide blade like this. She was she was looking at my saw because she was using a saw that wasn't as as accurate. As you know, I was cutting the screws. She was thinking about seeing if she could do it. She was cutting it with a some kind of jeweler, some kind of jeweler's saw that they had that was, you know, but she was doing it. <coughs> but that was kind of an interesting twist. Um, what else do we have? Yes, sir. The uh, glass. <laughs> glass you can do, and you can cut it. You can cut it on a saw. I can cut it better with a glass cutter, but you can cut it on a saw. But the reason I don't like cutting it on the saw, because you need to do as it shows in there. And I think about four years ago or five years ago, you guys had a demonstration on it. Um, you basically, basically use a syringe type thing that drops water on it constantly. And so what you need to do is create a, a dam to cut it. So therefore, you, the, the, you create a, a mud dam where you're cutting so the water stays in there because and then it cools it. It keeps it cool and it cuts it just, better. It just, drips on, it just drips right where the blade is. Just drips it's where the blade is. We're looking at it as combination, in other words, we, you know, laser patterns. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you're doing a splashback, that's really easy and you just tile saw and just, you know, because mm -hmm. it's maybe... Because it's straight. straight. And most, it's always straight cuts. Yeah. We're looking at doing some maybe uh, Fixed. inlays and, uh, and arcs and stuff like that. I would think if you get a cart, like I said, if you look in here, look in the glass, look in the glass section of this, and there's also a, it talks about the blades in there too for that. But basically, there's a carbide, there's a there's a, there's a carbide blade that'll cut that'll cut them. If you're so cutting diamond glass, glass, diamond blade, diamond blade, diamond. I said carbide, diamond blade. Diamond. If you're cutting glass, if you keep a wet sponge touching the blade all the time, yeah. the heat from the blade going up and down in the glass will pull the moisture from the sponge and keep it lubricated. Right. That's what I do when I do the, um, when you use one of those uh, spiral cutters, you know, for, uh, when I cut glass, I cut it with a regular glass cutter and stuff, but I, because I do stained glass. I used to do stained glass before I did wood. I do a lot of stained glass, but um, you use a sponge on the back, on the back side. I know a place to get the diamond blade if you want it. I'll tell them George got a couple weeks ago. Yeah, they're not, they're, they're not, they're what, $25 or 30 bucks a piece? No, this one's a thousand paid for 10000 Oh yeah, that's right. I heard, I heard about that. You wanted me to, you, you, you had put in, you had put in a dollar and I was supposed when to put you in you get those, I want to buy one. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, but uh, um, anything else? If you haven't cut cards or you haven't cut paper, paper's kind of cool to cut. You can cut multiple multiple uh, things so you can make you know make that um, you could in theory I haven't done it but you could who doesn't have one who doesn't have one and would like to cut one you want to cut one you want to cut some cord because Georgia no. see that may be the wrong thing <laughs> But uh, um, another thing you can do, if you your think about your attorney would like that one. Um, the other thing we talked about, we talked about making stencils. 
for the, the top, make it out of plastic. Now what you can do is take sponge, okay? And it cuts better if you wedge it, if you, if you sandwich it between two boards. But let's say you were doing a kid's room and you wanted to have, let's just say it was an animal motif and you want it, and you want it webbed feet on the, on the, on the wall. You know, or you want it web feet walking. What you could do is cut the sponge in the shape of a web feet. Then when you released it, it's now that web foot, and then you can put then you could put it in the paint. And you could have the web feet all over. Or you could have you know whatever you want, you know, let's say if you wanted to do that, you know how a lot of times you put that stuff on top? So instead of buying those, you can make those. I mean that would be a reason for doing doing that. Um, you can do you could do stencils just like you know when we grew up, you know didn't remember we didn't have computers, and letters all the same on something you you created you you went and got your stencil out you know and you and you drew your label okay now you move but you could do the same thing in a piece of cardboard you know make make a stencil let's say you want a stencil of your name or whatever uh, if you let's say you wanted something to put on the back of your objects or something so what you could do is make yourself a stencil. Make out of something that's substantial, and then when you get done with your project, you could just you know, take your paintbrush across it and it, it put your name or whatever in it. And it could be fancy. It could be relatively fancy. It could say by George, you know. I can think of something else too. You can go to Home Depot and get you a sheet of the rubber gasket material. Mm -hmm. Scroll out a pattern on that, glue it to a block of wood, and rubber stamp it. You have rubber stamps. I'm just trying. To, come on, guys. I need a little, little bit more help. Just a little bit. Well, you have these people that go around and put numbers on your curve. You can do the same thing with the stencil. <coughs> yeah, but you could do, and you could also, you could do put that. Put numbers on the mailbox. That's what I do. Put numbers on the mailbox. But I'm saying, but but see, if people wanted numbers on the mailbox, you could put them. You could make them out of another material that might be more um, not. Uh, not so affected by moisture and the humidity and the rain and everything else. So you can make them out of a different material. Yeah. Possibly that might be helpful. Uh, last time we did this, somebody brought in PVC pipe. They cut PVC pipe and made stuff out of PVC. A lot of us, a lot of us use PVC for different things. Anything else? And I apologize for the program tonight. I was a little bit. I thought it was a pretty good program. I didn't have, like I said, but I didn't have all the stuff made like I normally do. I just didn't have a chance. Anything, any qu any questions for the good of the group? Any additional things? Um, my coin's around somewhere. It's over here. It's over there, okay. But, uh, you know, it, coin is not bad. If somebody can look for me and, and find, it was, it was either in Scroll Magazine or the other magazine, there was an article. And, and the guy was cutting, I know he was, I can remember the article, this is plain as day, but I just can't remember where it was, I couldn't find it. He's cutting um, the state quarters because he had cut all of them out. And what he had is basically taken a piece of hardwood, if I can remember, I should have done it. He took a hardwood, took a drill, took a um, forester bit, bit that was, that was, the inside diameter of the ring, of the quarter, the edge of the ring, and then did it in a piece of hardwood, and went down just, just the thickness, just the thickness of the quarter, and so the ring was holding on the outside edge. And then he and he and he had it small enough so what I'm saying, you know, he had to make a few of them, but after a while he got, I mean, it was just a matter of making a few. And then what happens is. When he pushed down the, um, if I got one, the edge, the edge, when he when he got it in, he he would tap it in, and the edge of the coin acted like a like a stop. You know what I'm saying? It it stopped it, because what he would do is he would, you know, if he let's say in this case he wanted to do. This is North Dakota, so he did the buffaloes on the back. <coughs> so what he did is got it right close to his thing and then took a rubber mallet and, and pounded it in there. So what happened is it the edge kind of acted as a as a gripper 
and put it in there. Um, you can buy a portion of bits that are sized for the coins. Right, but it would need to be, it needs to be, one slightly smaller. It needs to be, so it, it goes the ring, it needs to go so it hits about right there, so then you could cut everything out and the coin would still, you know, be, be there. It wouldn't work for that pattern I just gave you because you got to cut through the coin, but for cutting the, the stuff out in the middle, which makes it kind of interesting. You can really make some really neat stuff. And if you think about it, if you work it ahead of time, you can go to Hobby Lobby, you can go to any of those places and get the necklace piece you need, the little fast, the little fastener things you need, or whatever you need. And then um, the lady that's next to me makes clay jewelry a lot that I'm with. And she just takes um, heavy, heavy string, I mean the heavy kind of nylon based string, and then what she does is puts two surgical knots in it. One on this side and one on that side. So then all she has to do is she pulls it and it can adjust the length without having to retie it or whatever. So that way she sells her stuff so it can be, you know, so it hung here or hung here, whatever, or different people. You know, she can hang the different, she could just move it by just moving those knots and those knots stay sturdy in whatever. But I'm saying you could do the same thing. So then if you wanted gifts for somebody, you could, you could make some coins. Let's say they were from California. You could, you know, find some California quarters and make them some California necklaces, you know, or jewelry. Because I remember growing up, and I don't think it was done on a scroll saw, I think it was done by hand, but I remember going to the Black Hills and uh, Mount Rushmore and in that, and they were selling a lot of the coins, a lot of the cutout coins back, back when I was growing up. That was a big thing, cutout, cutout coins. You know, you could get them buffalo nickels and all those different things back then. But anyway, that's it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Very good.